goals. And she's got seven goals in her last 12 games. She is the second top scorer actually in the league coming into the weekend behind only the currently injured Diani of PSG. Not quite happened for her so far this afternoon. Here goes Clara Mateo threatening to go all the way through, but coolly across. Step the Almeida. Again, when I think Mateo's on the ball, I think everyone from Paris FC gets hope, you know, the willing runners, because you know she's going to look after the ball. On that occasion, she did get crowded out, but she does at least gain kept territory and cause these PSG defenders some problems. Well, she's the one looking uh, most likely to make something happen for Paris FC, isn't she? So we head rapidly towards the uh, final five minutes of this first half. It's that chance, so a better touch. The touch really let Bordeaux down, didn't it? It's behind her. And then tries to set Sawyer up, but well defended by PSG. It was, as you mentioned, though, Laura, timely reminder really to the home side at this stage of how finely balanced this remains <laughs> goal a straw at the end of last season between these two teams the only point that Paris FC have taken in the fixture since their rebranding made her on there Tini on the touchline. Yeah, it's a clear foul. She doesn't get anywhere near the ball and her arms over the top of Tierney. You know, way too aggressive. You can't come through the back of her like that. She is also, like her central defensive colleague, facing a former club. Alisa de Almeida was at Paris FC between 2016 and 2019 key figure at the heart of the PSG defence these days. The concession of the free kick was fairly clear cut though as Sawyer takes it. Fioro trying to pick up the pieces here. in pink not pressing quite so high just at the moment everybody back behind the ball inside their own half of the field be content enough you suspect to go in at half time like this here's Karshawi hey, that's far. Hey. Hey, that's far. close to going out of play Dioro wasn't giving it up having lost it initially Martini with the time to turn. Corbos trying to spread it wider. It was uh, cut out by Baltimore. They're both getting through plenty of work when they don't have the ball. She was looking for some support. Might settle for that in the circumstances. to the home fans frustration it's gone the other way neither side really able to exert their authority on the game at this juncture no I think PSG have looked dangerous when they get the ball wide to their fullbacks Lawrence and Karshawi and they get crosses in that's where their best opportunities have come from and pick up the first and second ball and Paris FC have done really well on the counter attack quite intricate and here they come again looking for the spectacular Taking the shot on from range, it wasn't too far away. 
No, I mean, the space is opened up. No one's closed their down, so why not? You know, she's certainly got that in her locker. Mateo. Thanks, Gaia, realising she wasn't quite going to get to that. Increasing the volume levels on Derby Day from the stands. Nothing between these Parisian rivals yet. There is, of course, 16 points between them in the league standings. So in contrast to last season, Paris Saint-Germain had that disappointing end to the campaign, didn't they? In the end, 14 points behind Lyon and only uh, three above Paris FC. <laughs> Title race much tighter this time around. Just the one additional minute at the end of the first half. They're still really searching for inspiration, the home side. <laughs> Well, sometimes there's a difference between slow and predictable and, and being patient, isn't there? You know, you really have to find the balance. A bit more threatening here, maybe. Things guard was uh, in the middle, cleared away by Boutel. And Rowie with the foul, which ensures that no further pressure will be able to be applied. I mean, that's the second or third time that Tierney, you know, she knows where the pressure's come. She just moves the ball, so she takes the contact. And it's so important for a team, again, just defended a dangerous cross in their box. But they're picking up the second ball in that midfield, and she does it exceptionally well. That's what you want from your big players, to make sure you're going at the half, all square. 15th senior season, a two-time player of the year in this league. That experience has certainly been on show throughout the entirety of this first half, which ends all square. No breakthrough as yet between these Parisian rivals. Not too many clear-cut opportunities really created by either. And at the break at the Stade Municipal Georges Lefebvre, it remains Paris Saint-Germain nil, Paris FC nil. Looking yet at this stage, will they? No, definitely not. You know, with the quality on the pitch and also the quality on the bench, which you've already mentioned, you know, they certainly have those big game players that when required upon will step up, take their moment. We have plenty of options in reserve to uh, to mix it up. Paris FC will be satisfied so far. And a point for them, given that Fleury lost yesterday, would be a very useful one in the battle for third. Exactly, and I think they can be pleased with their first half performance. 